We have all seen people saying they got bad results from this or other subliminal maker. I, for example, have received comments or personal messages of people saying they got bad results from my subliminals. I have received these comments and messages talking about other subliminal makers in the same light as well. Almost every, if not every person I know with a slightly bigger following, has been accused at some point of giving bad results to someone, while many other people report to only have had positive results with these very same subliminal makers. However, it is not realistic to think that every single subliminal maker puts bad affirmations on their subliminals. So why do people get them? Subliminals work on the principles of law of attraction. Every single second of our lives is manifested by thoughts slash beliefs. We are not only able to manifest great positive things as we are able to manifest bad things for ourselves as well. In fact, most, if not all, bad experiences we go through have been manifested by our own selves. When you are using subliminals, whatever you end up manifesting is not really due to subliminals, but due to your mindset and beliefs. Subliminals are just a tool of manifestation. They help you get to the right mindset. However, you still have to do the manifestation work. And I'm going to get more in depth about what is this manifestation work I'm talking about. You still have to understand law of attraction. You are still using it and therefore you still have to apply it. Some people get bad results from pure law of attraction when no one by them is feeding them the thoughts and the beliefs daily. So it's only natural that the bad results you may or may not have from subliminals are not, at least not always, from subliminals themselves. Every second second of our reality is a mirror of our most dominant beliefs, even if that dominant belief is not something you think about every day. It is something running like a software in the back of your mind and will manifest itself in your rea reality in a way or another. Now, regardless of the bad things you realize you may have manifested throughout your life, just know that you are not to blame. No one is to be blamed. No one manifests these bad things on purpose. It's all accidental. You cannot blame yourself for subconsciously doing something you are not aware of. We are programmed in certain ways throughout our lives, especially early teenage years and mid late childhood, to teach us how to part ourselves, how to respond to emotionally triggering situations. It's during these years that you form many of our limiting beliefs and insecurities. And like any normal human being, your insecurities and fears will pop out to haunt you as they are usually dominant beliefs and dominant belief systems tend to manifest themselves in our thoughts, and thoughts by themselves when dwelled on reinforce even more the belief system in place, and you focus on just happens to be what you usually attract. Many times we, we even have limiting beliefs we aren't aware of. The important thing is that you now are able to take this ability and use it in your favor to avoid bad things from happening again. So I'm going to be talking about negative results from both subliminal audio point of views, but also from everyday life point of views. One of the most common reasons why people get bad, reverse or negative results is, is attachment. And you have probably heard of this before. Attachment is a lack mentality, which is completely apart opposite from an impotent mindset. When you are to at attach to something, you may find yourself thinking too much about it, giving it too much attention. Some people, when they are attached, can and will still think positively about their manifestation, whether there will be often a sense of frustration and impatience. Someone who is attached will often wonder, where is it? Why hasn't it come yet? They may fear their manifestation isn't coming. They will wonder if they are doing something wrong instead of going to flow, instead of trusting the process. Some people are attached, who are attached, stay attached without results. However, some people, especially when they are 
spiraling down to despair and negativity will end up manifesting the opposite things. This happens because by being attached, you are putting out to the universe the energy of lack. You are personally telling yourself that you don't have it, so you manifest more lack. Acting and thinking as if you already had it is the key, as that is how you will be if you already had a thing. By being attached, you are creating more resistance and pushing away uh, what you want further away from you. By working on your thoughts, counter-attacking negative ones with positive ones, you will be installing in your head that you already have that thing and you have to see it as something you shouldn't worry about because you already have to perceive your reality as if you already had it. With attachment, another topic that is very seen is people trying too hard to get results. They may use subliminals for 18 hours a day, for example. They may make using subliminals a routine, forcing themselves to listen every day even if they don't feel like listening to them. Being afraid that they won't get results or th that they will lose process if they skip a day or two. They may even try every law of attraction method there is out there, doing them every day between many other things. The new session is not about trying hard to get something, it is about relaxing. It is about letting it come to you, not about you chasing it. When you chase it that much, it will naturally run away, it will create resistance. Think about it. If something chases you down the road, you will naturally try to get away, it's almost instinctive. You need to trust that it will come to you. You should not be doing everything you can to try to get results. If you are doing that, you most likely won't get results or even get negative ones as a result of that lack mentality I mentioned before. This does not mean that you should completely drop every single method there is. It simply means that you should be the ones or the one that intuitively feels right for you at the time being. We won't always feel inclined to the same method, actually, so it is extremely important to be able to listen to yourself. Manifestation or doing methods should be fun, you shouldn't feel forced. There will most likely be a point where you don't even feel like doing methods anymore. Maybe there won't even be the need inside of you to use subliminals anymore, and there is no need to worry about that when it happens. This usually means that all your work is done, and that now you can completely detach from it, that you don't have to worry about it, that what you want or better is coming. No, you can't lose process just because you didn't do this or that once or twice or more. Simply because you are using the law of attraction. The law of attraction does not stop, it does not take a break. You, it is always constantly working and happening. You can only mess up a manifestation if you believe you can. <coughs> Even if you get a bad whistle somewhere down the road, you can always come back up and turn everything around in your favor, still using this experience as a learning opportunity and to advance your manifestation skills. Because even if you believe you can mess up a manifestation and you end up m messing it up, quote unquote, you are not actually messing it up, maybe only temporarily, but you can always get it back, you can always get back on track. It's not unredeemable, no? Learning how to listen to your intuition is, in my opinion, extremely important when it comes to your manifestations, law of attraction, sublimes, and honestly, in everyday life too. Everyone has an intuition that can be heightened once you are able to balance and calm your ego. Your intuition will always help you pick out the best subliminal or the best law of attraction method for you. If you have a feeling you shouldn't use a certain subliminal or a certain subliminal maker altogether, then you definitely shouldn't listen to them. This can be felt through the vibes you get from the subliminal maker or specific subliminal or through an attraction towards a certain subliminal you just saw. This is why I always highlight the fact that you should always go by your gut Never just because someone else used a subliminal did work for them. 
Your intuition will guide you to the matters of formula that is more compatible with you and with your subconscious mind. When you choose to ignore your intuition and listen to a subliminal you felt you shouldn't, you're personally telling yourself that you don't trust your feelings, that you don't trust yourself, that you are not confident enough to go with your instincts. You are basically relying on others when you do that instead of relying on yourself. You are not following, following yourself or your intuition when you do that. You are following other people's opinions instead. You are following unhealthy parts of your ego by doing this. And besides that you are suppressing your feelings and intuition even more. Loving and respecting yourself is a very important topic to get new results and by rejecting an instinct you had, you are giving out the opposite message. message even if you usually love yourself and treat yourself right. When you get a feeling that you shouldn't use a subliminal or subliminal channel as a whole, it doesn't mean that, sub that the subliminal to person are bad or that they are untrustworthy, but rather that the formula does not work for you or that could give you unsired results even. Kind of when, when you use a cream that works great for many other people but that clogs your pores and ends up creating blackheads or even pimples as a result of that, it doesn't mean the company is out to get you, it doesn't mean the company is evil. It just means that cream was not most ideal for you and next time you will know that specific formula does not work on you and may even cause unsired effects. Now any formula can work for us, however there will be formulas that work better than others for you. Some people don't like certain words, other people don't like certain ways of writing or speaking, so naturally they will match better with a formula that has words or sentences they prefer, and if they use a subliminal that includes words or sentences they, they don't like, it will cause some resistance as the fact that they don't like it is already a dominant subconscious belief. It is in a way a limiting belief, yes, and it can be worked on. But most people won't really have the time or feel the need to change a uh, belief surrounding something they don't like, especially when it is just a word or a sentence. As you have seen, you should always listen to your intuition, and when you listen to your intuition, you will often feel bad vibes when it comes to certain people both in this subliminal community and in real life. So it is extremely important to understand energy and what bad vibes actually mean. You getting bad vibes from someone does not mean that the person is essentially bad. It simply means that the person does not align with you. It simply means that they are someone you simply shouldn't get close to, maybe because your personality is so clash. Maybe because you two wouldn't be compatible because there are different opinions and beliefs that would end up in some type of conflict. It could be that you two are just in completely different paths or simply that their subliminals are not ideal for you. Getting bad vibes from someone can also happen if that person feels depressed, insecure, sad, desperate, um, angry, tired, between many other things. Those things shouldn't and don't make anyone a bad person. I have met many people in this community and outside of this community that I never got the best vibes from, that I always knew their subliminals were not good for me, but that after, after talking with them and seeing how they genuinely act, I did see they are actually really lovely people, but most lived in abusive households, were in abusive relationships, friendships, dealing with mental disorders, many other things. It's, it's not just because they are subliminal makers that they have to have perfect lives. Most subliminal makers, even if they are law of attraction masters, are always learning more and improving their manifestation techniques. Sometimes you may not even be catching their actual vibration, but the vibrations of those around them or the main vibration of the channel itself or from the people in it. It is 
possible for people to curse objects and things so maybe someone is sending bad energy to that channel or cursing it in order to harm the people who use it other people may use subliminals to affect a specific channel and the results people get from it are for people who think that person is bad there is this thing that many people use that is cloaking your energy this basically makes you hard to read and may even drive many people off but it helps you protect your energy from others. It takes a skilled reader um, slash psychic to read someone that cloaks, cloaks their energy as there are many barriers in the way. Cloaking your energy many times makes it seem way more mysterious and darker than it is. Um, then there are people who are actually really not the best people in this world and because of that they may give off those vibes to certain people. However, this often is stuff like jealousy, immaturity in some areas, short tempers, being a bit unforgiving, having anger management issues or other flaws. Almost one in this world is 100% mature. We are always immature in one area or another. The real thing is trying to learn. No one, almost no one, is 100% good or 100% bad. All human beings are great to some scale. Even if you consider someone a bad person because of their flaws, this does not mean that they are putting bad affirmations in their subliminals. You can be a bad person sometimes and still want to help other people. Those two things are not essentially conflicting things. Being a bad person sometimes does not mean you are automatically evil and incapable of good. It is a very narrow perspective of reality and of human behavior and psychology. Sometimes you hear people saying certain things about that person and even without you wanting to, you end up being subconsciously influenced by those opinions, especially when it's someone you don't know, when it's someone you are not sure about, or when it comes to a topic you are very careful about. This being said, regardless of the person you may get bad vibes from, it's always better to not use them if you do get those vibes. As I mentioned before, please, no matter what, follow your gut. <laughs> kind of rhymes. <laughs> If you need help deciding on whether or not the energy is good, whether or not you should use them, I always recommend you to meditate on it first. Because some subliminal makers live in abusive situations, have mental disorders, depression, anxiety, anger issues, or are simply tired or sad, if you just make a subliminal when they are in a less than good vibration, that energy can pass down to their affirmations and create better results in the listeners. Many subliminal makers don't know this. Some only become aware of the vibration they are in afterwards, and if you struggle with mental health, then it can be really bad because even if you don't feel negative thoughts or thoughts you have while making a subliminal can pass down to it. Obviously, this is not an excuse. You should always try to be aware of your vibration and avoid doing subliminals in that vibration. Whether I lead off any subliminal maker, at least from the ones I know, does this on purpose. Because it can be really hard for certain people to determine whether a subliminal may have some energetical leftovers or not. Your best bet is to protect and cleanse your energy in your own vibrations. There are many ways to protect and clean yourself energetically. I'm going to be leaving some links on how to cleanse your energy down below, if I don't forget it, I hope not, I don't think I will, on how to protect it, how to clock it, between others in the description, I'm also going to be creating a playlist of Reiki audios and some subliminals are meant for protection, if I haven't, I don't think I have, or maybe I have, but anyway, I will link it, or to it on purpose if I haven't yet. Fear can also be a groundbreaker here. If you, for some reason, are scared of using a certain subliminal maker, you will most likely attract bad results on your own, even if the subliminal maker ends up being completely safe. 
when we don't take care of our thoughts and then keep a mental diet, also when we don't try to put our vibrations and energy on check, we are bound to attract what we fear. We attract what we focus on. So if you focus on fearful emotions, possibilities and thoughts, without ever contradicting them, you will most likely end up manifesting what you fear or similar situations that will make you fear like you will have with that fear, if that makes sense. Fear and anxiety can fool people and pass as intuition. Fear and anxiety are ego-ridden emotions. All intuition is pure and comes from the soul or the source or whatever you believe in. They can for the most part be rational emotions that only trouble us and that need to be healed. When they, you may fear listening to a serenal maker, but the other day that fear and anxiety may start making you overthink about other serenal makers. It may make you connect situations that are unrelated to each other. Therefore, it is important that you try to heal this as soon as possible. In this case, you should not listen to those subliminal makers while you are experiencing those feelings. You should focus on, heal on healing those emotions, on the limiting beliefs that may have surged to these emotions or that caused these emotions to appear and then try to let your intuition take over and guide you. Fear of not getting results or fearing, fearing something offset to what you want to happen is also a factor that can get you reverse results. Even though this is more related to the attachment topic we spoke before. I will also try to put together a playlist with Reiki audios and some so we will now just for fear, anxiety, and intuition. Um, I may also recommend some meditations for it. Your five minute description, trying to protect your energy may also help. I talk about it in the last point. Another great method is to meditate whenever you feel this way as it comes to your mind. When you listen to subliminals, like for example skin subliminals, it isn't uncommon to get opposite results first, in this case a breakout for example. This is not actually a negative result but a physical purge. The skin is composed by pores and inside those pores um, we produce oil through our sebaceous glands. When we get pimples it is usually the result of excessive sebum, the oil, then it's a uh, blocking the pore and therefore causing an inflammation or excessive dirt and bacteria build up inside the pores. When you have acne and decide to use a subliminal to get rid of it, if there are already inflammations taking place um, slash in process, the subliminal will speed them up which causes them to surge as if there were a breakout. Those pimples were already under your skin, quote unquote and they would have popped up later or sooner. When, we, when you heal the sugar causes you acne, you many times end up triggering it first. Kind of when like you have an unknown trauma and when you find out you have it and try to heal it, it usually triggers suppressed emotions to come out. Things like this could also be applied to other skin conditions. Besides that, if your acne isn't hormonal or genetical, but due to dirt and bacteria clogged up, then it might not just be a purge, but a lack of skincare. While subliminals are amazing, you shouldn't depend on them to magically make your skin completely immune to bacteria and dirt. While having that effect on your skin is definitely possible to manifest, it is always best if you also take the action and take extra care. This can apply to other things, if you use of subliminal, for example, and you have any health issue, even minor, you may experience feeling a little worse for a couple of days, which could indicate your body fighting against whatever the issue was. Physical pressures can also happen with weight loss and many other subliminals. I have 
Everything is happening with work, protection, karma, positivity, emotional and dealing with related subliminals. Energetic detoxes are extremely important for you to get results, even if the topic you are looking to get results from is completely unrelated to personality and spirituality. Similar to a physical purge, energetic purges happen when you have negative energy suppressed inside of you. You may not be aware you have these negative energies and thoughts slash beliefs in yourself, but they many times are hidden in a subconscious mind. This negativity is what stops you from feeling protected, from feeling positive and happy, and from being lucky. So when you use a supplement for these things, or that includes the things like this in a protein booster, for example, your subconscious is quote unquote forced to release these beliefs and feelings that are holding you back from these things. These negative feelings may come out as nightmares, anxiety slash anxious feelings, sudden fears and anxi uh, insecurities coming out and negative thoughts popping up in your mind. Besides this, I'm from a more spiritual point of view, if you believe in negative entities that can attach themselves to you in order to feed off of your energy, therefore making you more negative. These negative entities will fight against any type of protection or affirmation that protects you and makes you feel better and more positive. They may try to fight it off by making you scared and getting away from whatever you are doing in order to intentionally or not get rid of them and ways to make you scared could range from nightmares to making you feel sick even. Know that if you think your case is less possibility of presented, there is nothing to fear, as fearing will only give them more strength. They will only want you to fear, that's their point. You are in control of your reality, and they can only affect you if you give in to the negativity. They can only affect you if you let them affect you. Taking care of your mindset and of your thoughts it is actually one of the most, if not the most, important thing when it comes to manifestation. All of your thoughts are manifested, are manifested in reality in a way or another. As they become subconscious beliefs and subconscious beliefs will form thoughts creating a cycle. If these thoughts are negative, it creates negative limiting subconscious beliefs that hold you back in your manifestation and that can reverse your results. You may even have an overall positive mindset, but a simple admitting belief can still hold you back and give you reverse results, no matter how positive you have been feeling. When you start thinking negatively about something, or about it, or subconsciously, subconsciously finding ways to prove that those limiting beliefs are right, and don't counter-attack this thoughts you enforce limiting beliefs you already have and they become more dominant than they already were. In order for you to have positive results you need to work on your conscious mind as much as you work on your subconscious mind, as they are both connected and need to be in full alignment in order to have a manifestation occur. Thoughts are just as powerful of affirmations as the affirmations in any subliminal. If you are using a subliminal to become more beautiful, for example, yet you keep worrying, um, you keep thinking about how ugly you are, then you are making the belief that you are ugly stronger, not giving any chance to subliminal affirmations to deep root themselves in your subconscious belief, in your subconscious mind, I mean. Um, because the belief that you are ugly is already the dominant belief. This is a very similar um, to the concept of clashing. You can be physically pretty and ugly at the same time, and since the ugly part is already the dominant belief that keeps being fed by your subconscious mind, that one would still prevail and affirmations won't be as efficient as they would otherwise be. In order to get results from a uh, subliminal, you need to weaken the negative belief and this has nothing and this has to be done through a mental diet. 
Now, middle tiles are basically all you need. Don't think you truly need to achieve anything you want. Because even things as detachment come naturally once you efficiently adapt a metal diet. What is a metal diet, you may ask? Well, a metal diet is when you are self aware of the thoughts you think and that pop up in your head and counterattack them with an opposite belief. For example, if you think I hate myself, I am so stupid, you immediately think, no, actually, I love myself and I'm really wise. The way you are not um, letting this self hatred belief grow even further and you open doors for the positive affirmations you are feeding yourself with to grow. This has to be something you do 24 hours a day. You can really slack off. In the beginning, it can be a bit tiring. You might feel a bit overwhelmed. You will probably feel more limiting beliefs, more insecure, and more negative thoughts coming out after a few days or a couple days. So you need to be strong when it comes to that and really fight them off. As it really pays off after a while. It is best habit you could have um, when it comes to literally anything in your life. If it's a month, maybe you will not so much your mindset has improved or where it is to have bad thoughts and insecurities. Obviously relapses can happen, but you need you can't let yourself stay there for a while, you can dwell on it. You have to pick yourself up. A good trick that you can use is the seventeen second trick. You essentially think good things for seventeen seconds and then watch um much more positive things. Uh, and thoughts pop up on their own in your head. Sometimes to be worried about something or fear it don't happen, but it still happens. Or you may be having good positive thoughts, but still don't manifest what you want or manifest in one of the situations. If the latter happens, it's because you aren't truly aligned with your end goal. You were not living in the end. You were not living as if it was already yours. While thoughts are the main force behind all of the direction, the way you connect feelings to your thoughts is also important, if not even more important. It is important to neutralize negative feelings and allow yourself to feel through the positive thoughts you are trying to implant in your subconscious. If you are trying to manifest a relationship with someone, for example, but you feel angry and resentful towards them, you are going to be in an active repression when it comes to that person. And no matter how many good thoughts you have and how many good thoughts you put away, if you keep yourself in that repression, you are not going to be manifesting it skill still. I'm not talking about feeling that way for a couple of minutes or hours. I'm talking about staying that way and not doing anything to change it. Having feelings like that happens is how you react to them that matters. You should never suppress them. You should allow them to come out while not keeping yourself in their vibration. Thus, do help getting you out, out of it, but you will have to find out um, you have you will have to find out which thoughts resonate more with you in that moment. In moments like that, you do not need to force yourself to be positive and act like you already have it, as long as you try to keep yourself natural and believing it will be fine, that is enough and will give you move. It will help you move on from the lower vibration to a to a higher one. The same applies to the first thing I mentioned on this topic. Always are part of human nature. They can still appear if they are vibrationally aligned. However, when you are vibrationally aligned, will know that no matter what things always work out you will be fine regardless of the outcome and you will feel like you are going to get what you want or something even better when you are aligned or disappear but they are meaningless you become detached and you don't dwell that much on it if you look back you may even notice that in moments like this you are serving yourself or saying everything will be fine preparation is in short terms everything we are we attract what we think because those thoughts are also energy and intention. But it is simultaneously true that you attract what you are. So, for example, if you want to manifest love and vibrate at that vibration, you will attract love. If you live in constant fear, you are most likely going to attract more fearful situations. But this whole emotion thing I mentioned leads us to the next point.
Many people who ignore or simply don't know how emotional healing and shadow work are an important part of manifestation and love attraction. Even when we aren't going for spiritual and lifestyle related manifestations, healing is essential. Many subliminals include affirmations and for pos positivity and good thoughts, which can trigger healing, which then triggers an emotional and spiritual purge. But healing and doing shadow work is essential, no matter the goal. Not being willing to do the healing and working on traumas and suppressed emotions may actually cause negative results, as often our negative emotions will be connected to thoughts and negative thoughts, and the more we connect our emotions to negative thoughts, the more prominent those negative thoughts will get and the more difficult to get tested it will be. If those negative thoughts um, and those negative emotions are suppressed, the more you risk having suppressed limiting beliefs that may be difficult to identify. <coughs> Not only that, but when you emotionally react to a situation you didn't want to happen, you are sending out signs that it is your reality. However, you have to be focused on the end goal, you have to live in it, as if it was your present. So by negatively reacting to something you don't desire, you are basically reaffirming that reality. This also has to do with self-love and insecurities. You cannot expect to get physical results on something you hate. You, hate. Um, you have to at least naturalize that hate. If you want a more beautiful face, a face that you will love, how can you get it when you keep telling yourself that your face is ugly? And it's where it is. Not only you create resistance, but if you live, if you have to live in the end result, why would you hate the end result? You are just saying you don't have it by doing that, and once again, reaffirming that reality. You need to work on loving it no matter what, but also on loving it as if you already had the results you want, because logically, you will love the face you have once you got the results, right? Being neutral and accepting of the future you have is already a big step towards it, but the end goal should indeed be working towards that self-love. But how do we heal these things? How do we heal our traumas, our trust issues, our wounds? Well, we first need to look inside ourselves, to become more self-aware, try to identify them, and we can do this by looking at the triggers. Then we try to confront the part of ourselves that bring us down, also loving it and embracing it as part of your story. That is basically part of shadow work, however we should keep in mind the purge that can come with this, which was also mentioned before. Um, healing is not an all beautiful path with flowers and rainbows, it has periods where it's only storm and darkness, it can be very painful. A process where you could have rage outbursts, where you could have anxiety attacks, emotion, emotional meltdowns, three many things. Not everyone is ready for this, even though it is an important thing. Sometimes some supplements will include affirmations in their process for positivity and to be abundant without any n negative emotions or thoughts, but that could impact the user in this negative way as a response, because not everyone realizes the path is like this. Not everyone is ready for it, and the less ready you are for it, probably the harder the process will be. Especially if you don't know this and then you don't understand where those feelings come from. Um, but working towards becoming triggerless is really important because while it is okay to allow yourself to feel any negative emotion, if you become triggerless, you won't even have that negative emotion because when you become triggerless, that's all and when you efficiently are living in the end. This is the last reason I can think of as why you may get bad results. With manifesting, we always get what we want or something even better simply because we may not realize what is actually best for us and not always what we want is best for us. For example, you start using a career subliminal or simply law of attraction because you want to get a job promotion, but then you get suddenly fired and start wondering what happened, that you got bad results. You start wondering, did I do something wrong? Well, yes, that could happen, but sometimes what happens is that there is something even better for you out there. 
you may not realize it right away, but you may then end up finding a job that ends up paying better for you and that makes you happier and makes you meet amazing people. Another example is, imagine you have always sipped down wanted to be a singer, but ended up not pursuing that and went to outside business or medicine. You may try to get a better job in that area and instead are fired, but it could all be a sign for it to pursue, pursue that dream of yours. When you are in a relationship and you end up manifesting a breakup, even while trying to manifest a relationship to get better, it may mean that the universe wants you to focus on yourself and you and the traumas you may have. It may also mean that there is better or that you will be able to manifest the relationship you want with that person to where you want. But that you just need to go through that at the moment because things just weren't working out like that and you needed a wake up call basically. Once again, these are all about trust and going with the flow. You need to trust the universe that you will get what you want or better and then find out that the better was actually what you truly wanted deep inside. Believe everything always works best case scenario for you. Because it does, whether you want it or not, whether you realize it or not. I actually believe we as humans are programmed to manifest what you want or something better. But I think we are also programmed to not realize blessings had come disguised as curses. These are very common negative results people seem to get when they get negative results. Starting with headaches, headaches are not really a negative result and, and they are also not a positive result, but it is your body's way of communicating with you. When you get a headache, um, it is a sign from your body that you should take a break from listening to those subliminals, this break could be a few hours or for the rest of the day and in many times means that you should reduce the listening time a little bit make sure to rest as well not mess are going to be a really long topic as there are lots of misconceptions around the community about them sometimes you start using a subliminal and get a nightmare right that night which leads many people to believe the nightmare is related to, to subliminal this actually can be true, and many times it actually is, but there are also cases where it may not be, and we are going to analyze them first. Over the day, we watch television, YouTube, add videos, we play games, watch movies, series, uh, we read books, stories, are on social media, hear in the background other people speaking to each other. Many people believe most sets we see daily are filled with hidden affirmations and in order to make you buy the product, the product they advertise and sometimes even hide affirmations to make you insecure about whatever is being advertised, especially if it is a beauty related product. Most times when we hear people speaking to each other in the background, especially if many conversations are going on, especially in a shopping or restaurant, we cannot really focus on all of them at once, but likely we are going to focus, we are not even going to focus on any of them, meanwhile they are being absorbed by a subconscious mind, just like affirmations will be. Over the night when we sleep is when our subconscious mind organizes all the information it absorbed over the day. So certain things you might have caught as our anger, sadness or anxiety that were conversation related emotions or even the emotions, them, emotions themselves from these things could appear in your dreams as nightmares, even if you are using a subliminal with good affirmations. I talked about anxiety in the previous point. Um, anxious feelings can induce nightmares as it is unnatural. And many people, when they get nightmares from subliminal, it is usually from a subliminal they started using recently. Therefore, it is important to realize if the subliminal is related to how you subconsciously view new beginnings and new things in your life. If you usually are anxious about letting go and about going into the unknown, it will translate into a dream.
Of course, a new subliminal is not comparable to an actual real life situation where you need to actually go into uh, the noun of the new beginning, but it's often in small things that we find out and realize speak a picture. So things such as emotions can be translated into dreams. Dreams are actually ways a subconscious uses to communicate with us. By using subliminal affirmations and even conscious affirmations in your daily life, you are in a way communicating with your subconscious and therefore it's only expected that the subconscious will find a way to communicate back to you. That way are, that way are dreams and, and sometimes feelings and emotions we get daily. These dreams may be good or bad, but they all have a meaning. When you have a good dream related to the outcome you want or in general, you may associate it with a positive sign. However, just because you got a nightmare, it does not mean it is right away a bad sign or a sign that whatever you use is evil. Automatically thinking it is evil is... Um, automatically thinking it is evil just because you had a nightmare is actually a sign that you are living in fear and letting your ego reign instead of trying to have an open mind and looking inside of you for answers. Having a bad dream um, can actually just be your subconscious mind telling you to uh, telling you the limiting beliefs you have. It could be the subconscious mind telling you what you need to do, improve or change in order to get the results you want. Like we have talked before, um, listening while sitting there all pretty is not all you need to do. You need healing, getting rid of limiting beliefs, you need to calm down the ego, you need to do all these things. Uh, dreams have actually been studied, they have their own area of analysis and study. Psychoanalysis, for example, which is the area that looks real and treat traumas and repress emotions by interpreting the dreams and individual cats, explains this very well. Even if your dream did not directly link to the result you are looking towards, let's say you want to get a smaller nose and then you dream of witches, I, I don't know. Uh, the dream may still be connected because often dreams show up was in symbols. Funny enough, sometimes the symbols that show up in our dreams and nightmares as negative symbols, uh, symbols sorry, have positive meanings that often resonate with when you actually try to find interpretation for it. I recommend you to keep a journal and track your dreams and each symbol that there appears, whether good or not, um, and try to search for meanings for those symbols in dreams. For example, dreaming of deep falling meaning and see if it applies to you. Over time, try to see if you have reoccurring symbols and try to analyze if there was anything in your waking life, like situations or feelings if inflicted upon you, they may be common in the same days or around the same day you get those reoccurring dreams. I mentioned um, anxiety a little bit in the above points, but it is also important to note that anxiety can be one of the secondary effects you get from emotional and spiritual purging. If you believe in chakras, for example, and the energy points, anxiety is usually associated to an undeveloped root chakra and sometimes associated to an overactive third eye and quant chakras. So if you are experiencing this during those stages, make sure to meditate and even work on these chakras. Balancing your meridian points is also a really good way to calm down anxiety levels. Anxiety can also actually be the result of your body preparing for changes, especially if you usually react with anxiety towards changes like changing homes, schools or life, changing events like breakups and disappointments. It's on the same vibe as the new beginnings point I talked on before. And if it happens to be the case, then it's something to be worked on, especially because the anxiety may have been triggered by specific uh, by specific affirmation or by a negative feeling or thought associated to the thing you are trying to change. Affirmations of their own, when you do everything it refers, um, can only trigger certain reactions, they cannot create them. You already have those defense mechanisms in yourself if it happens. There are also other side effects that could happen for a myriad of reasons. 
I can't really remember anything else off the top of my head, but if you have another effect and can pinpoint why it may occur, please feel free to email me or comment down below and I'll try to explain and give you some guidance on how to avoid it from happening again and not stop it once and for all. That is all for now. I truly hope this clarifies some things and helps you solve any issue or question you may have about this. Hope you all have a great day and bye. See you next time.